Hello, uh, the practitioner here. This is in response. Uh, this is a video um, pertaining to a couple of comments. Uh, let me see if I can have, find the actual video. Um, okay, I'm going to open a secondary. Uh, basically, I got some claims coming up pertaining to um, the uh, Osama bin Laden stuff I had been mentioning in relation to 9 11 on my uh, re 9 11 conspiracy theory video. Where is it? Let me see here. Anyway, um, I'll read them out, and I'm going to be, uh, basically what I'm asking for is I'm asking for sources from anybody here, 9-11 uh, skeptics, um, uh, you know, um, you know, oh, sorry, rephrase that, um, you know, people who, uh, who, who believe in the traditional uh, viewpoint, anything. I'm actually looking for sources right now. Um, let me find it. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? What's wrong with math education? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm just looking for my, uh, uh, here it is. It's going to be really quick, and I'm keeping my voice down. Here we go. Okay, here we, here we go. Um, a guy by the name of R.K. Owens wrote on my page. Um, this was from the re 11 Conspiracy Theorist Debunked. Um, I, I pointed out the information I'd gotten from CBC's The Fifth Estate, um, but he said, here's some information you might find interesting. The Bin Laden relatives were flown out on September 20th, not two days later, as you claimed. Airspace had reopened at this point. If they wanted to, the family could have driven to Canada and flown back home on 9-12. Just because they're related to a criminal doesn't mean that they can be detained. Uh, what's more, they volunteer to be interviewed by the FBI and to wait for the U.S. airspace to reopen. Check your facts. Um, okay, well, this, I just, um... Then of course, uh, then of course he says, "Wrong again, pal." Bin Laden never met with a CIA uh, agent in Dubai. The French, land, the French freelance reporter supposedly talked to someone who were, uh, he worked at the hospital but wanted to remain anonymous, and therefore never gave proof that he even worked at the hospital. Further, the hospital denied it immediately, and Bin Laden said, "I never, I did not go to Dubai and ask you if my kidneys are fine." Um, George Bush met with a senior. Uh, 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 George Bush Sr. met with a bin laden relative just two blocks away. Man, can't you get a single claim right? You're embarrassed that you're just embarrassing yourself now. The conspiracy theorists claim that they met in what, uh, that uh, they met, uh, is that they met in Washington, D.C. on the morning of 9 11. Uh, but even that is a lie. This is a lie. The investor, uh, there was an investor conference at the Ritz Carlton Hotel where 500 guests were invited, including Bush Sr. and, and Shakif. Uh, and Shafiq bin Laden, but uh, none of the reports uh, indicate that the two uh, ever met face to face. Well, if there was a conference, wouldn't they have uh, bumped? Hello, they were at the conference together. Um, and then, of course, they say uh, Osama bin Laden guilty through taped confession of the 9 11 attacks. Uh, said, uh, oh, oh, sorry, that's somebody else's uh, comment. Anyway. Um, the thing, of course, is though, is that people. Uh, he's claiming that uh, that this has been denied. There, uh, that they denied this, and there was no proof. Um, I'm asking from people who uh, would, uh, who are saying that this is a lie, or who accept the uh, standard definition that Osama bin Laden uh, did it purely of his own right, and that there was no government involved. Uh, sorry, that Bush and his family, or anybody else, you know, of Halliburton, were not involved whatsoever. Um, if you could give me any sources pertaining to these claims, I've already asked Dark Hale, and he did not reply. So, um, and he later straw manned my attack on, uh, in relation to why I said uh, terrorist legislation was unnecessary at this particular point, or could be amended. Um, it, well, I mean, the fact is Canada was able to uh, take care of its, uh, take care of actual terrorist attacks that were being planned in the CN Tower using uh, old-fashioned police work and, uh, you know, warrants and the like, and, you know, there was not really any necessity, you know, there wasn't really any necessity to um, use the anti-terrorist legislation. It's the reason we actually uh, voted down two of the five um, major points. Uh, why, well, anyway, why uh, the identity card and I think it was the 72 hours uh, chart with uh, being held without charge were uh, were both voted out because they were found not to be necessary in light of this. So the question is, again, um, again, I'm still say stating that uh, you know, if Canada can do this. And, uh, you know, and we're only 30 million people. I mean, like, you know, we had access to the Internet and stuff like that. Um, couldn't the U.S. and Britain and Spain, again, I'm, I'm not trying, and I want to stress this clearly, I am not trying to make people um, forget the terrorist attacks like, uh, like, I was, like R.K. Owens was suggesting. What I'm trying to suggest is that the current terrorist legislation may be overkill, and um, it might be possible. Uh, in, especially in light of the fact that we know that terrorist attacks have happened, to amend certain procedures in light of the fact that probably courts would be more than willing to grant warrants on uh, people who might be possible terrorists. I mean, like, you know, the point is that, you know, if Canada could pull this off without 
you know, if Canada could defu you know could debunk its terrorist attacks using old style police work, couldn't we put more funding towards the existing police system uh, using the older fa using the older techniques and amend back some of the terrorist legislation? I mean, the U.S. Um, I'm I'm just thinking the U.S. specifically. I mean, the U.S. in particular has not been hit by a terrorist attack in. Uh, okay, granted, Britain is in more danger, and Britain I can understand. You know some of the stuff, you know, most of the stuff being there, even though it's only been two years, in the last two years. But the thing is that the Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City bombing, I'm still making the analogy again, that, um, that they caught the terrorist without need of any, uh, of the, any of the current anti-terrorist legislation. They didn't declare martial law, they didn't declare a state of emergency. Um, uh, again, I'm not saying that this was done either, but the point is that there were no infringements on civil liberties of any citizens in order to get the Oklahoma City bomber, or Ted Klesinski for that matter. Uh, you know, the Unabomber. Those two uh, terrorists were caught using old-fashioned police methods. We haven't had, um, you guys haven't had a terrorist attack in seven years. Um, the threats have gone down since then. I mean, we haven't heard anything on the news about any major new terrorist threats. I mean, the, you know, the whole concerns about the dusty bombs and everything else were done years ago. I mean, the point is that maybe, maybe now that seven years have gone by, maybe that there hasn't been, you know, even after four years, there hasn't been a, a threat. Might it not be an idea to um, keep a constant vigilant watch, but draw back on the legislation a little bit? You know, just you know, bear in mind that okay, we keep we keep a we keep a good look outside, and we you know we still keep a you know close maintenance on the inside. You know, um, you know people who were formerly on the watch list uh, ask for warrants in light of whatever collected evidence might have been uh, brought up from before under the current under the previous legislation. You know, use that as evidence to get official warrants to maintain normal research, you know, but do it under legal context, you know, do it under older style legal context, make people, you know, you know, at least a little bit, or hell, even, even by doing that, and then, you know, continuing to do, you know, continuing to get the warrants, but may, not making it a matter of public record, but keeping that secret. Here's another thing, if, if the laws are repealed, but the terrorists are still being watched, the people who are still on the watch list are still being watched, what actual terrorists if there are still any in the U.S. or even Canada, might actually get more comfortable and start revealing themselves more because they re because they think they're actually got their privacy back. See, this might be another effective technique to get rid of terrorists. You, you see, like if there actually are any. You see my you see my point here. That and bottom line, there hasn't been another terrorist attack in over seven years. So the some parts of the of the Patriot Act are probably unnecessary now. I mean, especially in light of the fact that there are previous incidences where using honest police work, you know, using standard techniques were perfectly fine to catch terrorists before to prevent them from doing stuff again. I mean, Al-Qaeda, you know, I mean, in all this time, has there been any, I mean, like, we've, we've had a lot of people shipped to Guantanamo Bay, we've had a lot of, but have we actually had a serious terrorist, uh, you know, attack to being deal with, you know? We haven't heard anything in the news, so, I mean, if there had been something in the news, we would, you know, if there had been a uh, t an attack threat or something like that, it would have come up somewhere in the news. I mean, the government wouldn't suppress terrorist info if there was if there was something you know if there was something serious like we would know about it. So you know even from mainstream news sources. So my question is, um, wouldn't it be an idea to at least give it as an experimental try? You know, lax it a little bit and see what happens. You know, this is just my. I mean, if there are terrorists out there, and you know, again, if there actually, if 9/11 was directly Bin Laden's own doing and is part of an ongoing, you know, attack by Al Qaeda and a few other terrorist groups against the U.S., then we haven't had an attack in seven years. Incidents have been pretty well down. There hasn't been a major threat that we've heard about on the news, so it could be weaned back a little bit to see if it's not really, if it's really necessary anymore. If the terrorist attacks were in part due to Halliburton, and they convinced Osama to do it, like uh, uh, you know, it, like Fr like Figaro, and you know, again, like the like apparently the mainstream news sources we're talking about, and you know, if the uh, if they uh, if the uh, if the Bin Laden um, the Bin Ladens and the Bushes were connected in that particular format, well, then there is you know, then there is something to you know, and. Uh, well, actually, of course, uh, uh, I should mention as well that RKO is kind of straw man my attack, where I said that they, just because they were relatives doesn't mean they need to be they, they can be detained. I wasn't offering to detain them. I was saying that you know that questioning would be. Um, I was saying that based on what I'd heard, based on the sources which I heard from CBC's The Fifth Estate and the like, that um, that it appeared that the U.S. Uh, and that the FBI had not really questioned them thoroughly enough, or you know, or had really even asked them any strenuous questions. Apparently, you see what I'm saying? Anyway, 
and of course, if Halliburton had any effect in here, then the terrorist legislation was not even necessary in the first place, and then it's part of a dictatorial government. Either way, follow my previous videos. I'm still asking for sources. You know the rest.